Whether you believe in anthropogenic climate change or not, it is undeniable that our climate is changing and that this is having a profound effect on Arctic sea ice. Satellite images have been detecting sea ice extent in the polar regions since the 1970s, and over the past 40 years, the area covered by ice has shown a dramatic decrease. Data shows that ice is breaking up sooner and forming later in the autumn. Last year, data showed that sea ice cover reached its minimum on September the 15th and was the second smallest on record. It is estimated that the summer minimum in September is reduced by 13.1% every decade. How do these changes in sea ice affect the animals of the Arctic? Most people have heard that polar bears are having a hard time finding food in the Arctic, but why exactly is that? There are 20 to 30,000 polar bears in the Arctic, living in 19 different populations. For most of them, there is insufficient data to establish whether their numbers are increasing or decreasing. But we do know that five populations are stable and four populations are declining in number. The population that has been most studied are those found in the Beaufort Sea region. Their numbers are known to have declined by 40% in the last 10 years. Polar bears like to eat seals that are rich in calories. They will lie on the ice next to a breathing hole of a seal and wait for it to pop up. This is called still hunting. In the spring, they will eat seal pups. They locate their dens by smell and will pounce on the roof of the den to break through and reach the pup. Researchers have found that polar bears are only active 35% of the time and are resting for the remainder of the time. To do this, they require a whopping 12,325 calories a day. To put that into perspective, an adult male needs around 2,500 calories a day. Polar bears tend to fast over the summer months when there is less ice around and rely on their fat reserves that they have built up from eating the seals over the winter. Because ice is breaking up sooner and forming later in the year, it is effectively extending the time that they are having to fast, or they are having to spend more energy walking or swimming long distances to get to any remaining ice from which to hunt. Polar bears in Baffin Bay, which were tracked using satellite tags, were shown to spend 30 days more on land in the 2000s when compared to the 1900s. This means they are not getting enough calories to sustain them and lose weight eventually losing muscle, which impacts on their chances of a successful hunt. One female bear studied swam 426 miles over nine days trying to find food. She lost 22% of her body weight and sadly her cub. Walruses are also dependent on sea ice. They like to haul out onto ice flows when they are not foraging for food on the ocean floor. As sea ice declines and floating summer ice is retreating further north, where the water is too deep for the animals to dive and feed, they are having to haul out on land instead. Although walruses are known to haul out onto land, it is now occurring more frequently and in larger numbers. This is causing a bit of a problem in some places such as Enormino, which is a small Russian fishing village along the Chukchi Sea. For the last decade, tens of thousands of Pacific walruses have used the shoreline to haul out. Unfortunately, the animals are easily scared by such things as humans or an airplane flying over, not to mention a predator which may be around. The walruses then stampede for the relative safety of the ocean. Many walruses get trampled on, especially the young calves. They can weigh up to 1.5 tonnes, so as you can imagine, there are many injuries and deaths. The other problem with hauling out onto land is that the walruses then have to travel much longer distances as much as a 250 mile round trip to get to their food supply. The sea ice also gives walruses protection from storms and some of their predators. They also mate along ice edges and give birth on the ice and there is concern that females and calves are suffering the most. Giving birth on land means that they and their young are more prone to being trampled. Also, because of the greater distance to reach their food, the female's body condition is suffering which could have implications on calf survival and their ability to maintain a pregnancy. Walruses are also hunted for their meat and bones for handicrafts. However, in some areas they have been protected and hunting is not allowed. An example of this is Svalbard in Norway. In this area, walrus numbers have increased, which is fantastic news. However, it is feared that the overall carrying capacity is declining due to the reduction in sea ice and that numbers will eventually go back down. The iconic narwhals of the Arctic are also facing problems. 
Narwhals are very slow swimmers. They only move along at about three miles per hour, which is about our walking pace. When faced with the predatory orca, they dive or hide within thick ice. But with less ice around, orcas are able to catch them more easily. Narwhals are migratory. In the summer, they live in sheltered inlets, bays and fjords along the Canadian Arctic coast and northwest Greenland, but migrate southward as these areas start to freeze over in the winter. By mid-November, they gather in large populations in the offshore areas of Baffin Bay and Davis Strait. Here they dive deep to feed upon the Greenland halibut and are almost completely surrounded by dense winter pack ice. They have very predictable patterns of migration and tend to return to the same wintering grounds year after year, and it is here that they do the most feeding, unlike many other whales who feed the most during the summer. Research investigating the effect of water temperature on narwhals has shown that in areas where the sea temperature has increased, the abundance of the whale has decreased and so is limiting the habitat range of narwhals. It is suggested that the narwhals from the mid-east and southeast Greenland may have to abandon their traditional habitats and either migrate further north or locally go extinct. Narwhals are known to become trapped in the ice and die when the area they are using to breathe becomes covered in ice. This occurs when there is a sudden shift in the wind or a quick drop in temperature resulting in the water freezing over. More entrapments in the ice have been observed in recent years and at times and places when they would not normally occur due to the ice becoming more unpredictable in nature. Another issue that all Arctic whales will face as the sea ice continues to decline is that of more shipping in Arctic waters. This brings with it the hazard of shipping strikes and the noise pollution. There is also the probability that oil and gas industry will descend upon this rich environment that has opened up, increasing the risk of oil pollution. Reindeer are another animal that is suffering due to the reduction in sea ice and warmer winters. It has been suggested that the loss of sea ice is resulting in more rainfall and further research needs to be done to understand if this is actually a driving mechanism for it. Reindeer rely on eating lichen in the winter. They have to use up energy to dig away the snow to get at it. If ice covers the lichen, they are unable to dig through it and waste a lot of energy trying to do so. Often, the ice covers a wide area and they wander around trying to get at their food, dying of starvation in the process. Ice covers their food if it rains and then the rain freezes this is called a rain on snow event. These events occur naturally, but in recent years they have been occurring more frequently and with greater intensity across the northwest Russian Arctic, which is home to the world's largest and most productive reindeer herds. On the Yirmal Peninsula, during the autumn of 2013 and the winter of 2014, a major rain on snow event occurred, which led to the starvation of 61,000 reindeer out of a population of about 275,000 animals. Even if they don't starve to death, their body condition can be severely compromised and female reindeer in poor body condition will abort their unborn calves and so calf production goes down. Conversely, the early melting of the snow makes food easier to find in the late winter, reducing mortality and improving the health of the reindeer and so increasing calf production. However, it is believed that the early onset of spring cannot completely compensate for the problems experienced during the winter season. After all, the reindeer need to survive the winter to be able to benefit from an early spring. These are just a few of the Arctic animals that are suffering due to declining sea ice. There are many more, but it gives you an idea of the problems faced by some of these beautifully adapted animals as their home disappears. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and share with your like-minded friends.